So no. We've been having a big debate at this table, and Barry's been a huge part of it, about what the Fed should or should not be doing and where we really are in this economic cycle, whether we effectively are already in a recession or not, and whether the Fed is doing too much or too little. I'm okay, very this. curious where you land on this. I, I think that we've had 15 years, 14 and a half years of Disneyland <laughs> that basically has destroyed the economic structure. Think about it, no interest rates. So anyone who's today 40 years old, realizes like 40 years old, with no experience in markets. Right. <laughs> with zero, they don't know what time value of money is. Okay. So the Fed overshot by lowering interest rate too much. The first 100 basis points work, the second much less. At zero interest rate now, <laughs> of course, for a long period of time, you are hurting the economy, <laughs> you're creating bubbles, creating tumors like Bitcoin, creating uh, tumors like Bitcoin. Yeah, or hedge funds <laughs> that should not exist but have existed for 15 years. Okay, we're going to dig into that in just a yeah. second, but keep going. So, so now we need to go back to normal economic life. Here I see people are experienced and, pe you know, people with experience remember that there, were, there was at some point such a thing as a discount rate. So we had interest rate, time value of money that your investment had to earn cash flow. All these notions escape the new generation. Okay, so they need the case, but, but, but I think the question at the moment is, uh, they might have overshot on the downside in terms yes, of yes, lowering yes, rates. Yes. Have they overshot? I mean, Barry's no, making no. the argument now that they've overshot the opposite way. I, th I think they need, what they need is learn what economic you know, policy should be and what monetary policy should be, all right? You don't lower rates too much. You need to bring them back to a normal level. And, are they and at not a normal? vary too much from these levels. But are they at a normal level no, now? No, no. 4%, I think. 3 to 4% is a normal level. And then you have room to go up or down from there. But, but, but the argument I think that Barry's making, the and case. I don't know if you got a chance to, to hear, hear it, is that he thinks that we're already in a recession. Mm. That things are, are actually going to turn over in a terrible way, uh, and that by continuing to raise <laughs> rates, we're only going to make it worse and not uh, affect the supply. I think issue. okay. So, I think you so, should be going slower. Slower. You have slower. you have you have a dilemma. All right. You cannot lower rates. You can't. You know, we've learned that it was a very bad environment for the U.S. economy. All right. You have transfers of functions. Right. You have a. You did have a pandemic. Finan the financial. Sorry. <laughs> you had a pandemic. Revenues went to zero. And that also had pandemic. But right. It was not. It was not a. The last 15 years was were not good years. Okay. So, that generation of people they have the wrong instinct. They have the wrong methods. Those who made a lot of money during that period are basically right. the least fit for the next for so real market. What markets. would you do though if you were so, Jay Powell, right now? As, as he said, if I'd be careful in raising slowly, or I would stop, but I would, I would be careful not to use monetary policy excessively on a, by lowering rates too much, because that's what, what brought us here. It, and also, remember that when you lower rates, you create bubbles, financial bubbles, without necessarily helping the economy. You see? So this is something also they, 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 they figured out after 15 years. Right. right. As the author of The Black Swan. Yes. What is the chance in your mind today that there is a black swan event, meaning that there's something systemic <laughs> right, about where we, All right, no. where we so are? It's not a black swan. This is a white this swan. <laughs> this is a white swan. We, we a white have, swan. A white this swan. is a white swan. I mean, think about it. People are pricing things at a discount rate close to zero, and right. now suddenly they discover that there's time value of money. What does it do to equities? Think about it. We just plug in. 1%, 2%, 3% in your discount rate and see what happens. Well, we see so, the multiples come down on just about everything. It, they have to come down a lot more to go to the normal level. How much? And then we start speaking. All right. Let's so we have, we have, so eventually, anybody, so real estate, I mean, they created what, 100 and some but trillion you, dollars of value? To Becky's yeah, question, what Becky. do you think the true downside is at this point? Because you're saying it has to come, everything has to come down more. I, I, it's not going to come down in an orderly way. Okay, we well, had an order. It's we not had to come down in an orderly way. No, Why not? No, because we had because uh, in the beginning we had an orderly uh, decrease, but typically when you see what happens with pressures, people have stop losses and stuff like that. So when when uncle points are hit, then you start seeing volatility. It comes down and then snaps up and then comes down. This is I mean bear markets are violent, 
often mean reverting. There was autocorrelation, like big down moves followed by big up moves. But overall, you know, down. Okay, this is what we observe. So is it the black swan? There's no black swan. No, it's it's a, it's, it's a, just the nature of markets. Okay, when you hit the, uncle points, that people sell. All at once. <laughs> yeah, right. there you go. That, that's a, that's the story. That gradually, then quickly, that we're still far away from uncle points in portfolios. We're still far away from uh, stressors. Okay, the Bitcoin still is still used. It's still at twenty thousand. It's not at you know at a thousand or zero.